February 5th, 2023 brings us to episode 495 of 4 and 3 Sports Talk. This is another um, NFL Player of Owls only episode. Thank you for your continued support of the show, and I hope you are enjoying the series. Today, we continue on the defensive side of the ball um, with the cornerbacks. So, just give me one second. Just got to load up one thing. Hope everybody is doing well and enjoying the month. February is starting to be a little too warm for uh, my liking. It's weird. Anyway. All right. We are good to go, I believe. And yes, here we are. So yes, um, just like I said, um, I am going to start with the cornerbacks, but just want to let you know, I'm bucked up. <laughs> anyway, um, these are the young men on the forefront of pass protection. Um, actually, at the very end of pass, the forefront of pass protection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Let's make sure I use the word right. Um. Mostly defending wide receivers uh, on either holes on the out wide or to the speed demon guys that man the slot. Um, Devon Witherspoon and Clark Phillips the third are the top corners on, in my eyes this year. Um, I'm excited about this year's um, crop of players, so let's get started, shall we? Yeah, 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 might as well. Here we go. Number 10, I have Deontay Banks out of Maryland. Maryland was also another team that I often saw on uh, TV this fall as well. Uh, Judge Corian Bennett uh, came into the season with all the hype in Maryland secondary. And while he remains a quality under the radar prospect in his own right, uh, Deontay Banks effectively broke onto the scene across from him and has morphed into a potential early round prospect. Potential, potential. Um, at 6'2", 205 pounds, Banks has a terrific blend of athleticism, length, and play strength. And he's shown that he can convert um, at the catch point uh, with a, a pick and... Eight um, pass blocks in 2022 as well under his belt. He put up some eye-catching reps against uh, 2024, um, next year's uh, wide receiver one, who's already going to be the next year wide receiver one, Marvin Harrison Jr., um, and has the tools to match up with anybody. So he locked down probably the best wide out in the country right now. Um, just to say a little bit about him. Anyway, number nine, Julius Brent out of Kansas State. This is just the I, I, I saw in highlights and stuff like that. Longer cornerbacks are back in style with the emergence of rookies Tariq Wooden and Ahmad Sauce Gardner. Sauce Gardner, that's my guy. Two New York Jets got the Rookie of the Year awards. Garrett Wilson out of Ohio State for the wide receiver. Sauce Gardner out of Cincinnati. Top corner. Um, I think he let up... Uh, QBR is like 52.8 or something like that, or 52.4, some crazy ass number. Came into the league talking shit too. We all love guys like that. Anyway, um, an Iowa transfer who notched four interceptions and four pass um, breakups. Um, Brent has an overwhelming wingspan and nearly 34 inches. With the arms at six foot four, two hundred two pounds, kind of reminds me of uh, oh, hey, out of Notre Dame a couple years back. He plays with Ravens now. Um, Fitzpatrick, I believe. It's a safety. I think it's like number fourteen or something like that. I don't know. Let's Google it and, and let me know. Anyway, uh, but yeah, the overwhelming arm span. That's fucking crazy. He's um, he's a rare corner with um, reach. But he's surprisingly agile and twitchy and incredibly proactive, um, aggressive, run support defender as well. Haven't really seen him get beat too many times in coverage. Excuse me. But the game tape is definitely different than the highlights. Number eight, Eli Ricks out of Alabama. Hold on. Do not get upset. He should be, what, what you think he should be down? Like, Third place, maybe? 
Anyway, Eli Ricks transfer to Alabama has been a wild saga for everyone. <laughs> Um, after arriving as a projected first-round pick, uh, Ricks failed to win the starting job in camp. Wow. Uh, he didn't get his first start until late October, That at least that I, I was able to see. Um, he only played in five games on the year. Um, but his first start against Mississippi State was an absolutely dominant showing. Um, when he's on, Ricks has the tough physicality and coordination to suffocate receivers and put them on an island in which they will never try to go to again. In space, he has technique, um, and it appears to be improved as well as um, as his collegiate career has gone on, but uh, consistency remains an issue. Um, his, like, honestly, consistency remains the issue despite how good he is and all the, all the everything that he can use um, in pass protection. Number seven, another guy I just talked, to, uh, talked about on the intro, Devon Witherspoon out of Illinois. Not too many people got a chance to see him um, um, on TV. However, from this point onward, um, any of the listed cornerbacks uh, could be potential first-round picks from here down. Um, Devon Witherspoon has been receiving that kind of buzz recently, um, and for good reason. Coming off the consensus all of American season, where he produced three interceptions and fourteen pass breakups. That's cool. We like that. Um, having said all that, uh, Witherspoon's lower than expected ranking on this list is more a matter of my projection. Um, He's an extremely instinctive cover man uh, with burning physicality in both phases. Um, but he's also not quite uh, an elite athlete that that um, that you expect with a lighter frame than than preferred. Not expect preferred. Excuse me. Um, his ceiling isn't quite as high as the top corners, but he'll be a very good starter for a very long time. Um, number six, Emmanuel Forbes out of Mississippi State, another guy potentially going to go first. E. Forbes closed out his career as the all-time leader in pick sixes, an accomplishment that, that's fittingly uh, emblematic of his natural playmaking ability. On the boundary, he's the kind of uh, momentum-changing impact that um, he's going to bring it to the NFL. It's going to be crazy. Um, not like... Dallas cornerback, what's his, what's his face? The guy had all the picks. Um, he, doesn't ta- he doesn't play that style of football. Um, this guy's just all physicality. All, all these traits are all him. Similarly to, similar, similarly to Witherspoon, uh, Forbes has an underweight frame and could um, complicate, complicate his uh, projection a little bit or where teams take him. Um, Witherspoon's also a more disciplined in coverage than this guy. Uh, but Forbes has a superior combination of explosiveness, length, and twitch. Thus, he up the upside gives him the edge. Number five, Kim Smith as South Carolina. Kim, this is another, when I was watching, um, I was watching tape on one of those, one of their defensive tackles. This is really undersized. I forgot his name. Um, but this is where I saw this guy, and then when I saw Cam Smith's body of work, I was immediately impressed, and so he's number five on the list. Cam Smith comes from the same school as former Carolina Panthers first-round pick J.C. Horn, uh, who's embarking on a Pro Bowl-worthy campaign this year. Uh, to be clear, Smith isn't anywhere near the prospect that J.C. was, uh, but he could go um, on to be a solid uh, pro in his own right. Um Number four, Clark, Clark Phillips III out of Utah. It says a lot that Clark Phillips III has some cornerback one hype in him at 5'10", 183 pounds. Uh, the below, below average length, uh, it's going to be hard um, when playing the ball um, in the air. Uh, if he was a little bit bigger, we'd probably be talking about him uh, being a clear-cut top dog. Um, but much like his status as a unanimous All-American. <laughs> Um, uh, Phillips' lacking of length doesn't detract slightly from his ultimate ultimate ceiling in the NFL, uh, but he 
can be an elite slot defensive back, I think, right off the bat. Uh, with his versatility and playmaking ability, um, from all the spots, he's, you know, he's so sticky in coverage. Um, athleticism and high-level instincts are easy to bank on. You take this guy um, if he's sitting there and you're in need of a defensive back. Number three, Joey Porter Jr. A lot of, lot of, uh, a lot of sons of NFL greats that grew up that I watched in my time are starting to come out now. That's awesome. Um, after the dominant sixth deflection showing against Purdue in week one, and Purdue scored a lot of points last year per game, uh, Porter only added five more deflections for the rest of the year, and that stalled production. Um, it's a question mark um, on the surface, but more often than not, he simply um, dissuaded teams from even trying him in coverage. It's like, fuck it, all he did was run all game. Porter doesn't um, quite have the pure explosiveness um, and speed that our top two guys have, um, and it's largely what relegates um, him from to the third spot. Excuse me, but with his his proactive physicality, length, fluidity, technique, and ball skills, he can lock down uh, wide receivers um, early on in reps. Number two, personal favorite of mine here is not a preference thing. Georgia produces top defenders, and especially in the secondary here with um, Kelly Ringo. Uh, Keely Ringo. With the size and athleticism combo, Ringo um, likely isn't uh, sniffing the second round at all. He'll go He'll go in the first. That's, that's without a doubt. Well, it's never a good idea to speak on absolutes when you're trying to analyze drafts. Uh, Ringo's traits are exactly what teams bank on in the first round. Um, and often within the top uh, 15 picks. Um, he still has moments of inconsistency where his technique and ball tracking at times. Um, and at his weight, he isn't always uh, seamless on transitions. Uh, but he often he offers more than enough fluidity and foot speed and has the explosiveness, um, play speed, and length to lock down receivers in, in all thirds. Um, and number one, Christian Gonzalez out of Oregon. Yes, I did watch a lot of Pac-12 football, admittedly. They're not soft. They're football players, too. <laughs> uh, probably down the road in the draft process is where we are all caught up um, we might talk about Christian Gonzalez. You might not even know who he is yet. Um, a borderline elite corner prospect. His tape on the stretch last year um, was absolutely phenomenal. Uh, and he has a matched combination of physical and mental tools. The mental tools are what you're looking for. Um, I, I, go, I went on to say at 6'2", 200 pounds, Gonzalez has it all. He's an elite size speed threat with uncanny fluidity and agility in short ranges. Um, he cannot contort at a moment's notice to corral pa- He can contort at a moment's notice to corral passes, and with his eyes in reaction quickness, he's always in position to make the play. Uh, he has blue chip upside and is trending up faster than anyone else I know. And that is my list. Let's go with the honorable mentions, and we'll close out this episode. Garrett Williams out of Syracuse. Corey Trice out of Purdue. Uh, Tyreek Stevenson out of Miami, Florida. Kai, Caillou Blue Kelly out of Stanford. Uh, Makai Garner out of LSU. DJ Turner out of Michigan. He was fun to watch this year as well. Jalen Jones out of Texas A&M. Miles Brooks out of Louisiana Tech. Arquan Bush out of Cincinnati. And uh, Kai Trell Clark out of Louisville. And that is the end of the 495th episode of 413 Sports Talk. Thank you for all your support. We'll see you tomorrow with another episode.